Hello everyone and welcome back to Willow's Notes. In our last video, we covered G protein coupled receptors. And in today's video, we will talk all about receptor tyrosine kinases. Receptor tyrosine kinases exist as monomers. Each monomer has three parts, an extracellular ligand binding site, a transmembrane part, and an intracellular tail that contains multiple tyrosines. Let's talk more about the tail. What are tyrosine kinases? In fact, what are kinases? First of all, kinase, A's. So they are enzymes, right? And enzymes are proteins. What does a kinase do? A kinase adds a phosphate group. So I'm going to select that phosphate group from ATP to a protein. Why does it do so? Why does it transfer a phosphate from ATP to a protein? In order to activate it. And in some cases, to inactivate it. But what does that mean, to activate the protein? See, in signaling, the cell is either asked to make brand new proteins or modify pre-existing proteins. In this case, those proteins are already made. They just need one last modification for them to become active. That modification in this case is the addition of a phosphate group. Notice how the whole structure of the protein changed when the phosphate was added. And hence, this changes the protein from inactive to active. And what do we call this when a phosphate group is added on a protein? This is called phosphorylation. So the kinases, they phosphorylate. And of course, the protein is not going to stay phosphorylated forever. It's not going to stay active. And that's why other enzymes called phosphatases, they dephosphorylate. They remove the phosphate group from the protein to change it back to its original shape. We often sketch proteins as lines, but if we really look closely, they are made up of amino acids. In eukaryotes, there are two classes of kinases. Those that add a phosphate group to serine and threonine residues, and those that add a phosphate to tyrosine residues, which is the case of the receptor tyrosine kinases we are discussing today. You might ask why? Why serine, threonine, and tyrosine? It's because these amino acids, let's zoom in more, and you could all see that these three amino acids have the OH, the hydroxyl functional group, and you need the hydroxyl group in order to replace the hydrogen with the phosphate group. When the signaling molecules bind to the receptors, the two monomers move and come together and form a dimer. The formation of the dimer activates the tyrosine kinases of each monomer. The tyrosine kinase of each monomer will add a phosphate from ATP to a tyrosine on the other monomer. Once the receptor is fully phosphorylated, it becomes active. Specific inactive relay proteins, they bind to the receptor tyrosine kinase. And when they bind, they change shape and become activated. Each activated relay protein triggers a transduction pathway, of course, leading to cellular response. Unlike G protein coupled receptors, here, a single ligand binding event can trigger so many pathways. And this was it for today's video. I hope you found it easy. Don't forget to like and leave comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!